Good morning, everyone. My name is Alex. I'm one of the lead historic interpreters here at Mackinac State Historic Parks. So today we're gonna to be talking to you a little bit about Wayne's Legion, the first American soldiers that are going to be here at Fort Mackinac. Now, these are a very important group of soldiers as they are at the northernmost fort in American territory following the end of the American Revolution. Now, the fort they come to in 1796 is less than stellar. The walls are falling apart, the uh, wooden pickets that are on top of them are rotting away, and so it will be the task of these men to simply try to keep Fort Mackinac standing, as it had been in a state of neglect ever since the British soldiers had been here. Now, one of the things they're going to do is try and reinforce the walls. And one of the walls that they're going to try to redo is going to be this one right here. This back wall was initially just part of what was known as a ravelin, sort of a, an exterior wall that the British had built to protect their actual rear wall that would have gone between two bastions. So the Wayne's Legion will repurpose this as their main wall, but it's still not going to be enough to really make this fort really that great especially given the one major weakness of Fort Mackinac, that it's not built on the highest point of Mackinac Island. All anyone would need to do is put a cannon right behind this fort and it would be totally indefensible. So the men here are going to have to also build some more defensive positions. For example, there are three blockhouses in Fort Mackinac, the East Blockhouse, West Blockhouse, and North Blockhouse. These will all be built by the men of Wayne's Legion. These will act sort of as their own little forts inside Fort Mackinac to defend the wall. Now I'm joined out here by Tristan today as well. Now we're both representing members of Wayne's Legion, which is essentially the first regular army for the United States of America. See, the United States doesn't really have a fondness for large standing armies uh, during the early years of our republic. However, they do realize the need for some soldiers to actually help to protect the border and to maintain general order. And so that is where the men of Wayne's Legion will come in. Now, rather than be organized like a normal army, Wayne's Legion is split into four sub-legions, kind of like the Romans did. And each of these legions will have artillery, cavalry, infantry, riflemen. And here at Fort Mackinac, we had a small contingent of artillerists and engineers, as well as infantrymen. And me and Tristan are both dressed up as infantrymen today. Now, for the men during this time period, they're still going to be using essentially the same type of weapon that they were using during the American Revolution, the Charleville musket, mainly produced in France. And since the United States still has such a large stockpile of them during the 1790s, this is the majority of the weapons that will be issued to the soldiers. And it is still a smooth bore, blint lock musket, which means the inside of the barrel is just a smooth metal tube, which fires a round lead ball, and it is ignited with a flint lock per, uh, system, where you have a piece of flint and a piece of steel, which will create a spark, which will ignite our gun. Now, the men here at Fort Mackinac, because they are preparing for the potential of an attack, say, by the French or the different native tribes or the eventual attack by the British that will come about 20 and five years later, they're going to be practicing with their muskets. They're going to be learning drill. And every day at the end of their guard duty shift, they will take their muskets out behind the fort and usually fire at a tree or some other object so that they can work a little bit on their target practice. So we're actually going to step back and we're going to show you the loading process that the men of Wayne's Legion would have been using hundreds of years ago. Now the soldiers of Wayne's Legion uh, would have actually been using von Steuben's manual from the Revolutionary War. Baron von Steuben being the man who would train the Continental Army how to fight so that they could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the British. And the first step of this process is going to be called Tristan to shoulder firelocks. Half cock firelock. Handle cartridge. Prime. Shot pan. Charge with cartridge. Draw rammer. Ram down, cartridge. Return, rammer. Poise, firelock. Cock, firelock. Take aim, fire. 
And one of the main reasons that they would even need soldiers this far north is mainly to protect the fur trade, which during the 17 and into the 1800s is the major industry in the Northwest. And this will be a multi-million dollar industry, whichever country controls this area can make a lot of money off the fur trade. Now, not only that, Mackinac Island, which is a fairly important spot to the different native tribes of the area, is going to be a key to holding relations with the native tribes in the area and giving out gifts and maintaining relationships with the different tribes, which will be very important. And lastly, this is the northernmost post for the United States. The soldiers here are protecting the border. And there's a lot to protect. For example, there are a lot of hostile native peoples in this area which do not like the United States that much. Many of the different native tribes are still loyal to Great Britain. Not only that, but there are a lot of British subjects on Mackinac Island as well. And through the treaty that gives Mackinac to the United States, it permits these British subjects to retain their British citizenship even though they're living in the United States, which means they will not really have any sort of allegiance to the Stars and Stripes. On top of that, there is also the huge concern by the 1790s that we could be going to war with France, which might seem kind of strange given that we were allies with the French just several years prior during our own revolution. By the time the French have their own revolution, the United States has changed its stance. See, rather than back the French, we choose to kind of back more with the British and trade with the British, which upsets the French. So there's a huge concern that what with this being surrounded by people of French descent and a huge French population in Canada, the soldiers here are going to be on high alert all throughout the 17, the end of the 1790s, just in case the French were to in fact try and take Fort Mackinac from the Americans. Wayne's Legion would serve an integral role here at Fort Mackinac and would play a very important part in Mackinac's history and in American history. And if you too would like to come learn a little bit more about American history, come join us on the 4th of July where we'll be having our all-American picnic presented by Grand Hotel. And for more information, you can always check out MackinawParks.com.